For this video, we're going to talk about how to choose the formulas that you'll use to find missing parts in circles. So you have two different formula sheets. You have one formula sheet that allows you to find segments, and then you have one formula sheet that allows you to find angles and arcs. So when you're choosing which formula to use, you've got to look at the problem and determine what am I looking for. Am I looking for lengths, or am I looking for angles and arcs? Okay. So I'm going to look at this circle over to the right, and I'm going to say, well, I'm looking for lengths. So I'm going to look at the sheet that is the lengths of segments in circles. Next thing I ask is, where's the vertex? That means, where do the two lines intersect? In this case, they intersect inside the circle. So that means that I'm going to use the formula part times part equals part times part. Remember that's two parts of one chord multiplied together equals two parts of the other chord multiplied together. So I've got to do 3 times x plus 2 equals 7 times 6. So then I got to distribute my 3. That gives me 3x plus 6 equals 42. Subtract 6 from both sides. I'm going to move over here. So 3x equals 36. Divide both sides by 3. That gives me x equals 12. So your answer, if you're looking for x, is x equals 12. If you're looking for the length, you would plug it back in and do 12 plus 2 equals 14. So looking at this one, we're going to ask ourselves the same two questions. First, am I looking for angles and arcs, or am I looking for lengths? On this one, I can immediately see that I am looking for an arc measure. Then I ask, well, where's my vertex? My vertex is in the center of the circle. So that means that I am going to add the two arcs together, divide them by two, and that's going to give me my angle. So remember, angle equals arc plus arc divided by 2. So I'm going to plug in everything that I know. Remember, I always plug into the formula so you'll know how to solve for x. So 62 goes in for my angle. One arc is 74. The other arc is my x, and I'm going to divide by 2. Once I'm here, it's simply a matter of solving for x. So I have to get this 2 out from underneath the fraction first. So multiply both sides times 2. That gives me 124. Those have canceled out. Equals 74 plus x. Subtract 74 from both sides. That gives me 50 equals x. That means that my arc measure over here is 50 degrees. Here's another one. So ask yourself, am I looking for angles and arcs, or am I looking for lengths? On this one, I'm looking for lengths, so I know I've got to use that sheet. My vertex is outside of the circle, so that means that the formula I'm going to use is outer times the whole equals the outer times the whole. So for the tangent, I know the outer length is x, and I know that the whole length is x as well because there's nothing to add to it. For the secant, I know that the outer length is 4, and I know that the whole length is from the vertex all the way to where it crosses um, through the circle on the other side, so I have to add those together. That gives me 16. Now, x times x we know is x squared, and that equals 4 times 16 is 64. Now, to get rid of that x squared, i got to take the square root of both sides. That gives me x equals 8. So my answer, the length of the tangent line, is 8. Now you're also going to have some fill in the blank questions on your test and quiz, and this is just an example of one. A diameter is a special type of blank. Would that be a secant, a tangent, or a chord? Well, we know that a secant goes all the way through a circle, and a diameter doesn't, so it can't be that one. We know that a tangent goes only on the outside of the circle and just touches it once. Well, that's not a diameter, so it can't be that one. 
it must be a chord. Remember, a chord only goes from one side of the circle to the other. A diameter is a special type of chord because it is a specific one that goes through the center. So for this one, you ask yourself the same question. Again, what am I looking for? Am I looking for an angle, an arc, or a length? In this case, I apparently didn't put the X, so we'll put it there. We're looking for an arc measure. Okay, so, well, this actually ends up being a really easy one if you think about it. You're looking for the arc measure. You don't have to do a lot of calculation because all you have to do is add up these and subtract them from 360. Okay, so 360 minus, let's see, the 90 and 90 is 180, 90, 200, 210, so minus 210 equals 150, so x equals 150 degrees. This is a tricky question because you were thinking in your head, hey, I'm going to have to do a lot for this one. You didn't, so always check to make sure of what you're looking for. So make sure that you study the things that we've talked about um, in class about our formulas. Look back over your definitions. Those definitions are going to pop back up on the quiz.